Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm here today to do a Friday Reads video and um, I didn't do a video last week, I just wasn't feeling up to it. I think sometimes all of the things just, you know, were getting to me and um, I just, I didn't feel like it. So, but I'm back today, so hi! <laughs> Some weeks are like that, eh? Um, and it is, we are, just so, okay, so mini update on things that are going on in the world here and those kinds of things. There will be a jump link down below if you would like to get straight to the books. Totally get why you would want to get straight to the books. Um, but um, before that, happy May 2-4 weekend to all of those who celebrate. It is the Victoria Day weekend, this, which is weird. It's very, very early this year. Because uh, we call it the May 2-4 weekend because... You know, <laughs> you'd get a 2-4, which is a, a case of beer, 24-pack of beer, because it's the first sort of big long weekend where the weather is nice. Right now it is overcast and rainy and wet out there. This weather has been just strange, but I think it's encouraging people to stay home, which, given all of the things, is not a bad, bad thing. So here, in terms of changes in Ontario, um, we're now... Um, uh, they're going to go into stage one of reopening things this weekend. Um, things like provincial parks and golf courses are going to be open. Um, not things that I partake in or use, but I get it, especially with it being a long weekend, giving people the opportunity to get outside, even though, as I said, rain. I don't know if it's going to rain all weekend, but right now, like, no, no reason to go out. Um, and then on Tuesday, because uh, Monday's a holiday for Victoria Day, but on Tuesday they are going to have retail stores who have a street exit or exterior exit, must be a street exit, um, can do with, I think it's like anything that has the capability to do curbside pickup. So don't quote me on any of this, like, research sites. I'm just sort of giving you ideas, uh, not ideas, I'm just sharing what I noticed from the announcements. But yeah, so I think it's stores that have can have curbside pickups, as opposed to just right now it's mostly um, like essential service places, like, like grocery stores and hardware stores are open and convenience stores, but any retail stores that can meet, and they also have to meet um, certain um, uh, you know, standards, I think, of being able to protect their employees and stuff like that. So I'm not totally sure if it's like stores that you can go into and shop or, or can do curbside pickup, or it's like the capability of curbside pickup, or if they're just saying not malls. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, for me, I'm not going to actually do any changes. I'm not going to try and get any shopping done. I'm not going to go golfing. I'm just going to keep things as they are, do my food shopping by, by pickup, which has been continuing to go well. And I do have the fruit and vegetable delivery place, which is also continuing to go well. Um, and that's been enough. And that's been fine. And even just doing those two things is uh, definitely have enough food, which is great. Um, and it is also a fair amount of work because all of the prepping and stuff like that. And I like to share my food prep on on Instagram I hope people aren't getting bored of seeing chopped vegetables or whatever but um I don't know it just makes it a more I don't know experiential type of thing and uh, I just am really appreciating fresh produce these days because I didn't think that's how things were going to go down I really thought it was going to be all cans of soup kind of thing for a long period of time but you know, there has been so many changes through all of this, and I think how, like, initially it was all, like, everyone had toilet paper and thought they'd have to not be able to leave their house, and then even just sort of, like, the types of transmission, you know, it was initially felt like, oh, it was always people who were traveling, and then it was a community spread, and now in Ontario and Quebec, at least, it's very much the spread has been in the long-term care facilities, um, and, you know, and now with the reopening, you know, they're going to take it step at a time and sort of see what happens with the reopenings and they said they've learned a lot from the places that have been open like the grocery stores and stuff like that so that sort of informed the practices for other retail stores. In Toronto they're also actually going to be doing some quiet streets so they're going to close them to cars. I can't tell if they have local traffic or not local traffic. Anyway they've picked a couple of different sections um, in their closing them to driving cars so that when people walk on the street they have more space to be 
away from each other, um, and they've p picked a piece of Lakeshore Boulevard both in the East End and in the West End, and one of the uh, one of or maybe several streets in Kensington Market, which makes a lot of sense because Kensington Market is very very close quarters, and it's it is like especially on the weekend, it is like uh, near impossible to walk on the sidewalk and not be like right waving between everyone. I haven't been in there since the pandemic, but you know, um, but it's a very very busy spot. Oh, it's a great place. It's the best place to get food. Like seriously, I have always loved when I have been close enough to Kensington Market for that to be where I shop. But right now, even shopping at a market is like I wouldn't. I'd prefer to do what I'm doing now, which is getting pickup and a uh, combination of pickup and delivery, and that's fine. But I'm, you know, Kensington is just. Oh, it's one of the best places in Toronto, and um, I imagine it's been hit hard by this. But there's lots of food places there, so I'm not sure. I have no idea if you have shopped in Kensington Market since the pandemic um let me know what it's like down there i'm very curious um to to hear that and um and yeah there's so many great places for food so anyway so that's sort of the state of things here in ontario and in toronto the quiet zones is a toronto thing um but we're following the same schedule as uh ontario because we're in ontario so it's been interesting to see how things have been rolling out um but i don't think i'm going to do any changes um the, like mostly because the changes don't affect things that I would do um, or need to do. I'm just going to see how things go and uh, keep things the same and that's fine. Um, although it is challenging for it to be a big holiday weekend. I know last weekend was Mother's Day so a lot of people did try and do things to work with that um, and uh, yeah, and so yeah so you know my mom passed away many years ago now like seven years ago now so you know, I usually, I just, honestly, I just went off social media because it's just like, just was like, I just, I don't know, I just can't, I don't know, gets me grumpy. Maybe that's another reason why I didn't do a video last week. Anyway, I hope everyone who does celebrate had a great time. It's just everyone, not everyone is, is doing the same thing or has the same feels. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Let's move on. Let's move on. Obviously, I'm still processing, but that's okay. Anyway, on to the reading. We are mid alphabethon. Wow, that was a really long non reading update. We are mid alphabethon. I started. Alphabethon is a uh, sort of every, I don't know, I think it's like twice annual, plus there's a summer run um, of uh, it's a readathon, and I will put the announcement video down below and um, follow them on Twitter if you would like to participate. It's really fun. This time the letter is the letter K. So I picked out a bunch of K titles um, or K authors or, you know, K challenges. Um, and have been reading that way and it's been really fun I haven't done a readathon like this for quite a while um, and what, what I mean by like this is that it's not a themed readathon or a genre based readathon um, you can the challenges are completely open um, and you can read any genre or style that you like which is really for me what works for me and so some of the books that I am reading this one I've been sharing a lot on Instagram I've been reading Taming the Infinite by Ian Stewart and I'm choosing it as K because this very much to me looks like a collection kaleidoscope event event kaleidoscope effect that's what I was working for this is a non-fiction book about math and um and I was in the middle of it ages ago and so wow oh my god this next one chapter 10 impossible quantities can negative numbers have square roots I don't know how much of that I am going to uh retain <laughs> um but some of the other chapter titles let's see if I can find one are very are quite lofty I think in their statements Oh no, Sis the system of the world, the invention of calculus. That's the chapter I just finished. It was quite interesting. Um, I do like math. Um, I've always liked math. And this I find the math actual stuff, like when they show the equations and stuff like that, I'm like, wow, it's been so long since I have done that. I would have to actually do some homework to actually understand it. But that's okay. I don't need to... I think this is one of the things I've realized with nonfiction. I don't need to understand everything to get something from the book. Um, one of the things that I'm really enjoying about this one is hearing a lot about the history of math and the lives of mathematicians, the inventions, and uh, is it would it be inventions in math? The different things that they discover, and um, just I'm just really curious about that. And it's been really great to read it. And I started it ages ago, so I'm really happy that the kaleidoscope is giving me a reason with Alphabethon to get back to it. And um, I'm, I don't think I'll finish it this week. I'm about halfway through. But even the fact that I made progress on it has made me very, very happy. Um, another book that I started and that I've read so little of, oh my goodness gracious, is Gemina, the second book in the Illuminate Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Chris. 
list off. I am buddy reading this with Izzy um, and Sarah and Roz, and there's a live show at the end of the month. I will leave a channel, leave a link to Izzy, everyone's channel actually down below. Um, but I'm only like 40 pages into this one, and I, I gotta say, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about it. I'm not as drawn in uh, as the first book. Um, but I'm still waiting to see what the formation is of the story. But so far, I'm just not connecting to it as much as the first one. I'm not connecting to the characters. Um, and the other one, I was just, it was like right away. So I'm, I think I think I'm, I think I will be. I'm just waiting for it. It's just, it also, I don't know, there's something else about it that would be spoilery to say. Um, but, uh, so I'm not going to say it. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm a little surprised at a couple things. So we will see. It's still early days. There's so many pages. Oh my God, I thought I would finish that this week. No way, I've read 40 pages out of like 200, or 658, or, it's a lot to go, a lot to go, so I'm going to have to get really, really active on that. Not for Alphabathon, but a book that I have been so enjoying, oh my god, is Making Comics by Linda Berry. I'm sure there is a K on the front here somewhere, um, a K object, this looks like a kidney bean, so let's go with that, just kidding. Um, so this is pretty similar to, um, uh, syllabus, if you've read that, is it is a syllabus for her class. Um, one of the challenges, though, that I'm finding with this book is that, uh, and I don't know if this is just the section. I love this. She has a daily diary. So there, there are actually sort of two challenges with this book, one of which is some of the, lot, a fair amount of the exercises are the same or similar to syllabus. Um, and then also there's a fair amount of exercises that are things that you would do with other people, which, of course, now not gonna happen because of the pandemic but so so yeah but they're still really interesting ideas and um oh god I just love I just I just love it I just, I just love reading it even if I'm not doing the exercises I absolutely love reading it and I'm just at the section that is about doing the story so this one is called Making Comics, so it is about idea generation and um character generation although in a bit of a wandering way to to get to that um which is quite wonderful and i'm happy to go on the journey and so for me i did just sort of have to shift my gears in terms of this is not something that i am working through each and every exercise and so that would just get me back to reading it and enjoying it and i'm putting tabs for where the exercises are and um, when i'm feeling like i want an exercise to do i'm going to go to do that i think i will try the daily diary style she has many different daily diary styles um, and um, she suggests trying each of them for a week to see what happens and so I'm curious to to give that a go um, and I just have to pick which one to do and uh, yeah and then because I would like to get back to doing art I'm not doing so so much I'm trying trying to draw a flower every day um, through May um, and um, I haven't done today's so but I would like to get back to doing more art Anyway, some other Alphabathon titles. I started Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz. Koontz? And um, this is a urban fantasy slash horror title about a character who sees... I don't know if they're considered ghosts or the dead um, or both. Um, I haven't read tons of it. I'm only on page 58 and this is over 400 pages. But I quite like the tone and Odd, the character, the protagonist is Odd Thomas. And he is quite an odd character, and so I'm really enjoying that. And there is a fair amount of humor, which I wasn't expecting, and I can really understand. Often when people talk about that they've read this book and they enjoy this book, there is sort of some joy and fondness, which feels very strange, because Dean Coots writes horror thriller, you know, stuff, and this, or urban fantasy, depending on if you classify ghosts as urban fantasy or horror, combination or speculative fiction, whatever whatever you'd like to classify it as, you can. Um, so yeah, so I thought that that was, I was always a little surprised at uh, the, the tone, uh, the fondness that people talk about this book given the subject matter, but I totally get it now because I feel that way. And that's really nice. This is actually, I don't know how long this series is, maybe seven books, so. <laughs> it's actually quite a fast read. Dean Koontz is very fast. Lots of short chapters. Look at all those chapters. That's one of the reasons why I picked it is that I figured I could at least get a chapter day. Which I've not done because I'm very unsuccessful at Alphabathon. Just been tired this week and so I've been falling asleep. I've only finished one title which was Kill Shakespeare, which was a graphic novel and I didn't really enjoy it and I'm so sad about that because it was pitched as um, what 
Fables did for fairy tales, Kill Shakespeare does for Shakespeare, and I just, I'm, I didn't really, I didn't mean to talk about it actually, but um, I'm really sad because one, a lot of the people that are involved in the creation of the comic are Canadian, so, or at least work in Canada, so it's usually Canadians, um, given the bios at the end, um, but I just didn't, I didn't, one, it follows Hamlet, which is one of my least favorite plays and not one of my favorite characters. And um, I didn't like the gender dynamics, and it's very harsh. Um, there's lots of mayhem and adventure type stuff, which is good, but I felt like if you changed the names of the characters so that you didn't know they were Shakespeare characters, I don't think you would recognize that they were Shakespeare characters. And I feel like, given that, then it doesn't even really feel like it is a Shakespeare retelling or spinoff, because there's not enough in there. Um, to, at least so far in the first volume, I felt like there wasn't enough in there to connect them. And maybe it's just the characters they chose, and I kind of feel like I know what, it feels like there's going to be a twist, and I know what, it, I think I know what it's going to be. So the premise, if you're curious, because there is a premise, is that Hamlet is recruited to get Shakespeare's quill or pen um, so that the characters can be in control of their own destiny and write their own lives. So they're lots of people want but it's called kill Shakespeare so I assume they want to him to kill Shakespeare and like Hamlet is not <laughs> like out of all of the characters of Shakespeare picking someone to get something done I would not pick Hamlet like his big character is that he gets in is, is in decision like that's so if you want someone who takes action it would not be Hamlet that's so I just you know it just not working like, you're gonna get someone to do something. Mind you, she's too clever. It's like, get Lady Macbeth. And she is a character in it. And she's quite a good character, but she's very sexualized. And I'm like... And, like, all of the female characters either are, are that, or they're, um, you know, people just talk to them rudely, or they're whatever. Like, anyway, I'm just... I, the gender dynamics I don't really like. But anyway, so, yeah, so it wasn't a win. But And I can't decide if, if anyone's read it, let me know if it's worth keeping on, because there's only four volumes plus a prequel that I'd skip, probably. Um, and I can get them through Hoopla, or maybe even the library. So I can't... I, I wasn't impressed, and I didn't terribly love the art style. Wow, I don't normally talk about something that I didn't like. I really didn't mean to talk about this, but... It just, it didn't, it just didn't resonate for me, and I, I think with all of the things right now, I feel like, it, like, if there's something I don't like, it resonates harder, like, it resonates more. I don't know. Anyway, this is hopefully something that I will like, and that is The Tie That Binds by Jane and Krentz, 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 um, and the character's name is Shannon. So rare. So rare. So, um, yeah, I haven't started this yet. yet. It's obviously a romance. It is, it's, it's, I was going to say it's historical romance. I don't think that's true. It's just old. It is uh, it's from 86, but this is a reprint from 93. Um, and it's a Harlequin. And I really want to read it. So I have no idea what it's about. Um, dark, compelling, mysterious uh, Garth was... No mere boy next door, even if he did rent the cottage beside Shannon Rains. Oh my gosh, even her last name has the same first initial. I should keep this for another challenge. Because often they say, find, like, read a book with a character the same first or last name. I'm like, so rare. Anyway, I really hope to get to this um, for Alphabethon. I think the only thing I finished is Kill Shakespeare. I have started, like, seven things. There are a couple more days. It runs until Sunday. So hopefully this weekend I can get a lot read. Although this weekend, and I'm doing a separate video about this, um, I am going to be doing some deep diving into my storage nook. I have seven books and one series in particular that I'm looking for, and I plan on actually reorganizing my bookshelves um, because it's time. I usually do it twice a year, and I don't even really think I did it this year. So it is time for a switcheroo. I will probably keep this shelf as it is. This is my 2020 red shelf. I like to have one shelf for the year that is completely unfilled where I can put my books as I finish them. I find it extremely helpful. Um, and um, some of these might get reshelved in other locations. Um, but uh, actually that would be smart to do as opposed to just leave it there. All of those probably need to be reshelved. So hopefully that shelf or a shelf designated for 2020 reads will be open at the end of the weekend. Oh, but I plan on doing that and a lot of reading in the weekend. And I'm like, I probably can't do both. And I want to do some cooking because I have some some food that needs to be, you know, eaten uh, that I have. And so 
I can't really do all three things, so I'm not sure, quite sure what's going to happen. So let me know how you're doing. Are you participating in Alphabethon? Um, have you read Kill Shakespeare? Have you read Jane and Krentz? This is an author that I have not read before, and she's quite iconic in terms of, I believe she did one of, if not the first sort of um, science fiction romances. Um, which I haven't read yet. I think it's Amaryllis, is that it? So she, she does um, lots of different styles of romance, and I believe she has several pseudonyms, but it's an author I've never read before, and from what I've heard, it sounds like an author that I would really like. So let me know, have you read any of her work? Where is a good place to start? Um, have you read any of her science fiction romance? Have you read any science fiction romance? I feel like it's not a huge genre that gets talked about, so I'd love any recommendations. I love Fortune's Pawn, but I consider that more science fiction that had romance. Um, but, uh, I know a lot of people consider it straight up science fiction romance, and that's totally fine. But, you know, anyway. So that's what I've been up to. Let me know what you're up to. What are you reading? What are you up to this weekend? Are you re reorganizing your bookshelves too? Ah, <laughs> we'll see how things go. Thanks so much for watching.